Good evening, sisters and brothers, and welcome to this evening's evening prayer. It's Wednesday evening, and uh, we are, we remember today, uh, St. Francis, St. Francis of Assisi, who died in 1226. So let's pray as we come to the end of another day. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O oh God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. Rejoice and be glad, for you are the light of the world, and great is your reward in heaven. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are those who suffer persecution for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Rejoice and be glad, for you are the light of the world, and great is your reward in heaven. <coughs> and our psalm this evening is Psalm 119, from verse 81. To 104 psalm 119 the longest psalm beginning at verse 81 to 104 we say the refrain first give me life O lord according to your word my soul is pining for your salvation i have hoped in your word my eyes fail with watching for your word, while I say, Oh, when will you comfort me? I have become like a wineskin in the smoke, yet I do not forget your statutes. How many are the days of your servant? When will you bring judgment on those who persecute me? The proud have dug pits for me, in defiance of your law. All your commandments are true. Help me, for they persecute me with falsehood. They had almost made an end of me on earth, but I have not forsaken your commandments. Give me life according to your loving kindness, so shall I keep the testimonies of your mouth. O oh Lord, your word is everlasting. It ever stands firm in the heavens. Your faithfulness also remains from one generation to another. You have established the earth and it abides. So also your judgments stand firm this day. For all things are your servants. If your law had not been my delight, I should have perished in my trouble. I will never forget your commandments. 
for by them you have given me life. I am yours, O oh, save me, for I have sought your commandments. The wicked have waited for me to destroy me, but I will meditate on your testimonies. I have seen an end of all perfection, but your commandment knows no bounds. Lord, how I love your law. All the day long it is my study. Your commandments have made me wiser than my enemies, but they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for your testimonies are my meditation. I am wiser than the aged because I keep your commandments. I restrain my feet from every evil way that I may keep your word. I have not turned aside for you, from your judgments, for you have been my teacher. How sweet are your words to my tongue. They are sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through your commandments I get understanding. Therefore I hate all lying ways. Give me life, O Lord, according to your word. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And our prayer. Lord Christ, as we sit at your feet, teach us your living way, for you are our word and wisdom, one God with the Father and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let's um, let's go to the song of Mary, the Magnificat. Remember your promise of mercy to Abraham and his children forever. <clears throat> My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. He has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit. Casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly, he has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Remember your promise of mercy to Abraham and his children forever. Amen. All right, let's move to our, our first reading this evening. Our first reading. And that is from 1 Kings. 1 Kings chapter 22, and from verse uh, 29 to 45. 1 Kings 22, from verse 29 to 45. And this is the, the demise of King Ahab. As I like to say, wicked King Ahab and the demise of his entire wicked dynasty. So, 1 Kings 22 from verse 29. Let's have some water. <clears throat> 
also King Ahab of Israel and King Jehoshaphat of Judah led their armies against Ramoth Gilead. <clears throat> the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, As we go into battle, I will disguise myself so no one will recognize me, but you wear your royal robes. So the king of Israel disguised himself, and they went into battle. Meanwhile, the king of Aram had issued these orders to his 32 chariot commanders. Attack only the king of Israel. Don't bother with anyone else. So when the Aramean chariot commanders saw Jehoshaphat in his royal robes, they went after him. There is the king of Israel, they shouted. But when Jehoshaphat called out, the chariot commanders realized he was not the king of Israel. And they stopped chasing him. An Aramean soldier, however, randomly shot an arrow at the Israelite troops and hit the king of Israel between the joints of his armor. Turn the horses and get me out of here, Ahab groaned to the driver of his chariot. I am badly wounded. The battle raged on all day, and the king remained propped up in his chariot facing the Arameans. The blood from his wound ran down to the floor of his chariot, and as evening arrived, he died. Just as the sun was setting, the cry ran through his troops. We are done for. Run for your lives. As the king died, and his body was taken to Samaria, and so the king died, and his body was taken to Samaria and buried there. Then his chariot was washed beside the pool of Samaria, and dogs came and licked his blood at the place where the prostitutes bathed, just as the Lord had promised. The rest of the events of Ahab's reign and everything he did, including the story of the ivory palace and the towns he built, are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Israel. So Ahab died, and his son Ahaziah became the next king. We continue. Jehoshaphat, the son of Asa, began to rule over Judah in the fourth year of King Ahab's reign in Israel. Jehoshaphat was 35 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 25 years. His mother was Azuba, the daughter of Shili. Jehoshaphat was a good king, following the example of his father Asa. He did what was pleasing in the Lord's sight. During his reign, however, he failed to remove all the pagan shrines and the people still offered sacrifices and burnt incense there. Jehoshaphat also made peace with the king of Israel. The rest of the events in Jehoshaphat's reign, the, event of, the extent of his power, and the wars he waged are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Judah. Uh, that's it, I think. That's it, yes. Okay, so um, the end of Ahab and the end of Judah and, and the end of Jehoshaphat. We are told Jehoshaphat was a good king, but Ahab, we know, was an evil king. God had determined, had decreed that Ahab was going to die in battle even though he disguised himself trying to prevent his death somehow through an accident. <laughs> it so happened that um, a, a soldier randomly shot an arrow and that random arrow was guided randomly <laughs> by the sovereign hand of God to Ahab. No other soldier was hit but Ahab, the disguised king, he was the one hit by this arrow and died 
And as God had promised, dogs would lick his blood. He was buried, however, because God had promised that um, he, he would not be the one who died in disgrace. His descendants would and his wife would, but he would, he would have a proper burial. And so he did. And that was the end of his reign. Even though his son reigned after him, uh, not much happened there, but then his daughter and so on became king, queen. Anyway, we leave that there um, for the end of Ahab and Jehoshaphat's reign in Judah and Israel. Let's um, just move to our Acts chapter 23. It's just a, probably the thing to pick out of that story is a reminder that God's sovereign hand is guiding uh, you know, despite the fact that uh, that Ahab tried to tried to uh, prevent his death in battle because the the prophet said he was going to die, and he did everything to to prevent that death. God still guided that arrow, um, a random arrow by a, 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 an unknown soldier, went straight for him. Uh, and it's it's a it's a sign it's a it's a reminder to us that God is operating in the world in which we live and and um, and and so you know his hands are there if, if if he brings judgment and he brings blessing and um, and in this case he brought judgment upon Ahab and we pray that his hands will guide blessings to us not judgment. The arrows that um, that are guided are not arrows of of destruction, but arrows of blessing to our lives instead. Um, Acts twenty three from verse twelve to the end. The next morning, a group of Jews got together and bound themselves with an oath not to eat or drink until they had killed Paul. There were more than 40 of them in the conspiracy. They went to the leading priests and elders and told them, we have bound ourselves with an oath to eat nothing until we have killed Paul. So you and the high council should ask the commander to bring Paul back to the council again. Pretend you want to examine his case more fully. We will kill him on the way. But Paul's nephew, his sister's son, heard of their plan and went to the fortress and told Paul. Paul ca called for one of the Roman officers and said, Take this young man to the commander. He has something important to tell him. So the officer did, explaining, explaining, Paul, the prisoner, called me over and asked me to bring this young man to you because he has something to tell you. The commander took his hand, led him aside and asked, What is it you want to tell me? Paul's nephew told him, Some Jews are going to ask you to bring Paul before the high council tomorrow, pretending they want to get some more information. But don't do it. There are more than 40 men hiding along the way, ready to ambush him. They have, they have vowed not to eat or drink anything until they have killed him. They are ready now, just waiting for your consent. Don't let anyone know you told me this, the commander warned the young man. Then the commander called two of his officers and ordered, Get 200 soldiers ready to leave for Caesarea at nine o'clock tonight. Also, take 200 spare men and 70 mounted troops. <laughs> Provide horses for Paul to ride and get him ready and get him safely to Governor Felix. Then he wrote this letter to the governor. From Claudius Lysias to His Excellency Governor Felix, greetings. This man was seized by some Jews. And they were about to kill him when I arrived with the troops. When I learned that he was a Roman citizen, I removed him to safety. Then I... <laughs> this is just funny. 
Then I took him to their high council to try to learn the basis of the accusation against him. I soon discovered the charge was something regarding their religious law, certainly nothing worthy of imprisonment or death. But when I was informed of a plot to kill him, I immediately sent him on to you. I have told his accusers to bring their charges before you. So that night, as ordered, the soldiers took Paul as far as Ant uh, and, and, oh, Antipatris. They returned to the fortress the next morning, while the mounted troops took him on to Caesarea. When they arrived in Caesarea, they presented Paul and the letter to Governor Felix. He read it, and he asked Paul what province he was from. Cilicia, Paul answered. I will hear your case myself when your accusers arrive, the governor told him. Then the governor ordered him kept in the prison at Herod's headquarters. Amen. This is God's word. So just quickly, just to, again, here you have God working behind the scenes. These Jews planned to kill Paul by ambush. And they would have succeeded had God not been at work. Remember, in the previous verse, we looked at yesterday, God had told Paul in a dream, in a vision, that he was going to go to Rome. He was going to pre preach the good news in Rome. So these Jews couldn't kill Paul because God had or, or already arranged for Paul to get to Rome. So here Paul is in Jerusalem and these 40 Jews are planning an ambush to kill him the next day. So it so happened that Paul's nephew, Paul's sister's son, overheard this conversation. Isn't that amazing how God works? Because Paul couldn't be killed in Jerusalem because God had planned for Paul to get to Rome. So it so happened that God, God strategically made this young man heard this news. He then brought it to Paul. Paul sent him to the governor. The governor then um, uh, uh, escorted Paul out of Jerusalem overnight in the cover of darkness to Caesarea where he would be safe with on, on the governor Felix. So it's it's just sisters and brothers, we just we just don't know how God works. And it's just that you know God orchestrated all this because God has a greater plan for Paul. It's not his time yet for his death. Eventually Paul is gonna die. In fact Paul's head is gonna be chopped off by the by the Emperor Nero. But that's not today. Today Jewish Jewish plots are not going to stop God's, God's plan for Paul. And, it, and it's a reminder to us, sisters and brothers, that our, our lives are in God's hands. If we are believers, and I say this, if we are believers, I don't know about unbelievers, but I know that if we are believers in Christ, He has our lives in His hands. And, and therefore, nothing happens to us without God's permission or without God's decision. Well, you know, this is, this, this is how we need to see our, our lives every day. Recognizing that God is sovereignly directing and orchestrating the things in our lives. And that these things are there for a reason and for a purpose. The problem is we don't understand the reason and we don't understand the purpose, but they are there for a reason. And God is in charge. God is, God is uh, moving the pieces of, the, you know, uh, 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 of our lives to, to suit his purpose and for, and for our good. In the end, for our ultimate good, it doesn't mean uh, everything is going to happen for our good in this world, but for our good in in life and for eternity. So just just in the case with Paul, God is working His purposes out through through our lives every day, even though we don't see it and we don't understand it. Amen. Let's pray.
Our Father in heaven, we thank you for bringing us to the end of another day. We thank you for the grace that you have granted us this day. We pray that as we reflect on uh, your divine and your provin providential ruling and plan, even in Paul's life, even with Ahab, uh, we pray, Lord, that, that you will guide us and may we see your hand at work in our lives. We commit our lives to you afresh. We commit this, this night, this evening to you afresh. And we pray that you will uh, protect us through the silent hours of this night. And keep us safe from all that is all of our enemies. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, Lord, we pray for the world. We pray for all who suffer from man-made disasters like war and violence. Remember the people of Ukraine and Sudan. We pray for all those who suffer from natural disasters, those in Morocco and Turkey and Syria. We pray for and those in Libya, places of flood and famine and drought. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer we pray for the church your people in every community and country protect your church from all evil and give grace to your people to shine with the light of Christ in the darkness around us in the darkness of this world in the darkness of our community in the darkness of even our families we pray for all bishops priests and ministers of your word and sacrament give them grace to lead like Christ and for all your people to live in the power of your spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the sick, the dying, the suffering. We pray for all those who suffer in mind, in body, or spirit. For those who suffer pain and discomfort. For those undergoing treatment for cancer. For those who are uh, suffering from mental distress or depression. For those in nursing homes, for those who are too frail or too weak to leave their homes, those who are too, the aged, uh, who, who are weak in body and even in mind. We pray for those who are undergoing surgery. Pray for Veronica today as she goes in for surgery. We pray for those who are contemplating surgery. We pray that you'll give them wisdom to make the right decisions. We pray for doctors and all those surgeons who are, made, who are operating on people today. Lord, we ask that you'll guide their hands and guide them, give them wisdom to make the right choices, to, make the, to, to, to do the, the surgery uh, carefully and so that those who are, who are sick will be brought to healing and strength. Lord, we pray for those who are suffering this night lord in your mercy hear our prayer we pray we, we, we want to pray the collect for this evening and the collect for saint francis oh god you ever delight to reveal yourself to the childlike and lowly of heart grant that following the example of the blessed Francis. We may count the wisdom of this world as foolishness and know only Jesus Christ and him crucified, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Eternal Lord, our beginning and our end, Bring us with the whole creation to your glory, hidden through past ages and made known in Jesus Christ our Lord. We pray this in his name. Amen. And we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, 
now and forever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord watch over you and protect you. May the Lord give you peace and rest tonight, sisters and brothers, as you sleep. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good night, sisters and brothers.